Many people in math and physics kind of hope to be the next Newton, because Isaac Newton was, of course, basically the most influential person in history, kind of with his sort of logic being able to connect physics and math, both being responsible for the Industrial Revolution, as well as kind of the age of reason in the century that followed his developments, which basically the modern world exists because of the Industrial Revolution and the Enlightenment and Age of Reason. And so he's kind of like the role model that people want to be. They want to be the next Isaac Newton. And kind of the way he did that, well, here, here's a map of science, right? And here we have kind of the natural sciences. These are the social sciences. And if you look back at like the ancient Greek philosophers, I don't know if it was Aristotle who directly said this, but basically these are the practical sciences. These are the theoretical useless sciences. And if you exist today, you're thinking, what the hell was wrong with those people? Think, th think about things from the point of view of an ancient Greek or literally anyone before Newton. What are you going to do with history? Well, you're going to understand the past societies and be able to help society today. What are you going to do with chemistry? What? Who cares? What are you going to... Okay, I, I know that rock is going to fall over there. That's not that useful. Understanding the way human societies behave? Yeah, that's pretty dang useful. Even when Galileo was a math professor, philosophy professors got paid ten times as much as him. You know, during the Renaissance. Before Newton, but during the Renaissance... Galileo was paid way less than the philosophy teachers because at the time, these were the practical sciences. This is what you can do stuff with. This is all kind of, I mean, we, we can kind of use it. And Newton basically turned that on its head by connecting these two. And basically, if you think about, like, if you ask why with biology, why are things the way they are? Well, they're that way kind of because of chemistry. And why are they the way they are in chemistry? Well, because of physics. And, um... We see with literally anything, like you want to think of earth sciences, space, like literally whatever, you connect it back to physics. If you just keep asking why with natural sciences, you get to physics. And what Newton did is he managed to show that physics and math and logic were very, very similar. And in that way, he brought a whole bunch of natural sciences from being just kind of the theoretical sciences to being the practical sciences. And these guys today, you know, no longer is this what you do if you're a theoretical person and you want to go broke. This is what you do if you're a theoretical person and want to go broke, which is really like that. That's why I think he's the most influential person in history, because literally everyone before him, this was just kind of whatever. And then in the 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st century, these have just kind of taken over the world because Newton was able to show that they were related to math and logic. And basically, psychology is almost like the physics of the social sciences. Like, why, why are things the way they're in history? Well, because of sociology. Why are they in sociology? Because of psychology. You know, and if you think about, like, other social sciences, like economics, for example, everything connects back to psychology. And some people might say, oh, well, we're going to try to make a economics like physics. But, you know, I've dabbled a bit in economics, and it definitely is more of a social science. I found much stronger correlations between things like life expectancy and infant mortality. They actually predict things like GDP per capita better than, I think, like, electricity consumption does. Like, basically, the social things are actually stronger correlated than the monetary things, which really shows that economics is more of a social science and, you know, physics, hard science, but whatever. Anyways, basically, Newton was the most influential person in the world because he managed to connect all this stuff back to math and logic, which is a language that we're, like, really good at speaking and become way better at speaking since Newton. And so that's why he was the most influential person of all time, except for maybe Confucius, but whatever. We'll see. He's the most influential person of all time. Modern society, industrial revolution, enlightenment basically exists because of this one guy that managed to connect these two and thus unite the natural sciences. Um, and so basically people want to be the next Newton. And I think the next Newton will not be in physics or not even chemistry, maybe biology. But basically what I think the next Newton, the next great unification in science that shall shift the world will be this. Because it turns out psychology is biology. It's just biology we don't understand yet. Like, there are freaking bajillions of neurons, human brain. I don't know the exact number. I think it's like 100 trillion synapses or some shit like that. Like, there's a lot of stuff that we just don't understand right now. Just like before Newton, physics was just like, it was, it was natural philosophy. Like, literally, the book he wrote was... The mathematical principles of natural philosophy. Because before him, all this was just philosophy. And same thing with, like, psychology and history and stuff today. I mean, there are a couple of things psychologists can measure. But the vast majority of stuff, it's pretty dang difficult for them to measure. But once we understand the biological roots and we're able to connect this stuff over here, a lot is going to happen. And I think, I don't know if it'll happen in our lifetimes. Maybe it's just impossible and it never will happen. But it'll be pretty dang interesting, and it does. Um, I also am really fascinating what's going to happen here because qu questions are from philosophy like art. Like, what is beauty? 
so far in this kind of math and logic centric world that has existed since Newton, we've tried answering questions in aesthetics with like math and logic and that just hasn't worked and has led to like kind of growing like nihilism and stuff. But I think it's possible if we can understand psychology better, we can understand things like beauty in an objective way, but not in like trying to reduce beauty down to physics objective way, which really hasn't worked recently. So yeah, that's why I think that the next Newton will be in psychology or biology rather than physics. So, woo!